Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. So mm -hmm. having you, having both of you guys on, uh, and Walter, and Walter as well. Walter, you've been in the firearms industry for a while. Kevin, you know, you're like that guy that seems to people probably that you're overnight success. But I know that represents a lot of work, uh, hard work, right? Um, you know, oh, same, man. same thing for Alex. Like, how, how the hell is the firearms industry like this? This is what I want to ask you guys. How is the firearms industry this messed up? And it, or is it just like every industry in America is this messed up and they don't go to bat for each other? I would bet that's true. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm a 27 year overnight success. I'm mm -hmm. dedicated to 46. My yeah. entire adult has been fully dedicated to this. Mm -hmm. um, I deserve everything I've received, you know, good and bad, probably. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think people are jealous and people are assholes. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about it um i do not like a lot of people in the industry mm -hmm. it, you know i didn't get in the industry to make friends i didn't get in the industry to be an executive i didn't get in the industry to own a company like i love innovation that's what i love mm -hmm. you know and there's people in the industry that you know the second amendment and that's more of their thing and i of course love that mm -hmm. but i love the innovation um but I don't think it's any surprise. I've been in every industry is full of jack. Like, so what? People. But th this is the time. The problem is because of politics. You know, it's like when we talk about firearms and w we can all, you know, quote the stats probably. And when it comes to children, oh, we're trying to keep children safe. Well, OK, fill in all your swimming pools. That kills more kids. But it's not a partisan issue. You know, firearms are a partisan issue. Probably why it's it's such fire all the time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't necessarily get along or have a lot in common with gun people other than they're into guns um I, I i bet that it's probably not very different than any other industry but but it is sad that we wouldn't all come together for this like mm -hmm. to, to me um you know i call people out i call companies out i want to be the best i'm driven to be the best and i don't like a lot of half stuff that happens in our industry and i call people out but so when it let me just say something though, Kev, because I want to ask you a question. It's I know we're live, and but I'm just thinking about it now. Uh -oh. But what was that you were drinking, Alex? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. It's it's, it's uh, yeah, bourbon. But oh, okay. let me just, because I I I know, and I know you're I know you heard how you're going to answer this question, but I'll bet you if some of the enemies in this industry came to you, not enemies, but people you don't get along with, came to you and said, "Look, bygones be bygones. Let's fight this together." You'd be the first person to say, "Okay." and let all of that stuff just go under the bridge. Oh, yeah, I don't, I mean, to me, I get so much bullshit because, and, and I don't know why people are so interested in my personal life or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would be the first one to do it. Like we can disagree all the time. We can fist fight. It's over when it's over. Like w with my woman, like we have an argument, it's over, it's over. I don't hold a grudge. So, but when it comes, uh, you know, for instance, I will tell you, someone that reached out to me, and i got a lot of respect for him now, the Iraq veteran, 8888, Eric, whatever. Eric? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So he said some stuff about my company and maybe me, but definitely one of our guns. And he even, he even prefaced it with saying, this isn't my personal experience, but I heard this. And he said a bunch of dumb, which was incorrect. It lacked um, credibility, fact. It was just all wrong. And I had a problem with it. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if you have an honest experience with my products and you state that. But when when anyone, especially in the media, states something that they don't have firsthand knowledge of and it's rumor, it pisses me off if it's wrong. And I called him out and I called him a dumb <laughs> and I called him like guy <laughs> of firearms and all this stuff, mm -hmm. which is how I felt at the time. Mm -hmm. And I want to give him props because he is one of the few people in this industry that when this happened, when I said that about him, he sent me a message and said, water under the bridge. This is bull. Anything I can do to help you, you let me know. Awesome. One of my, one of my favorite people in our industry now. That that That's a man right there. That's a man.
That's what I was going to say to you. That's how we're supposed to roll as men. I could tell you as a YouTuber or whatever crazy category people want to put me in, I say a lot of stupidness every day. Huh? <laughs> Creator, <laughs> creator, whatever, influencer. I know there's some tri uh, like controversy right now out there floating around about uh, <laughs> um, influencers or whatever, right? Uh, yeah. None of us are perfect. We are men. What we have to do is be able to own up to stuff. And if we can't, if we can't get together to fight, I feel like the firearms industry is on an island. So yes, there's other industries. They all have people in it. People do you know, stupid things to each other and all that. But the firearms industry is on an island and it, almost everyone out there is the enemy. Yeah. I mean, well, you think Alex and I can sue the ATO and we probably should. Mm -hmm. They're wrong, they're being assholes and they're knowingly doing something that is illegal and incorrect. And it just hurts us. And to me, Alex loves his employees. I love mine. They are second to me, though, to the people who spend their hard-earned money on our products. Like, those people are to be honored first. We should take care of them. However, if Alex and I spend two and a half years suing the ATF, and it'll cost us millions of dollars. The lost sales to both of us will be tens of millions of dollars. Like, what do we win if we win? And like I said earlier, like, no one in the ATF, no skin in the game. It's not going to cost them a penny. They'll probably get a promotion. Well, they're you using know? the people's money to fight you, which is always uh, endless, I guess. Yeah. And Alex and I probably paid more money in taxes than, you know, millions of other people put together. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, so they should have to have skin in the game. Regulatory should. But what I'm saying there is mm -hmm. the entire industry should support us. Because if SIG has sold three to 400,000 guns with braces, what's that cost them if they can't sell them anymore? Yeah. And, you know, that's right. an example. Absolutely. And back when this thing with the bump stock was happening, the entire industry should have supported that. Instead of leaving them out there as a sacrificial lamb, let's not forget about the companies that were making things and either went out of business or went close to going out of business and had to lay off fire and all that kind of stuff. Employees, I know there was stuff that was uh, taken and destroyed and all that, right? And that fight's uh, still ongoing, but, and, and, and I'm not trying to single anyone out, you know, basically as an industry, just... You know, the industry just let those guys get flushed. Yeah, and I think, though, like the one thing I would say is that, and again, I, I disagree with what happened with bump stocks, and I've said this on other shows before. Mm -hmm. there, I think we need to have an intellectually honest, open conversation, though, about, uh, about volume of fire. So in the sense of the bump stock, there was – you can have the conversation that it's a force multiplier, okay, mm -hmm. amongst us amongst the community. It's a force multiplier because you have something that shoots more bullets than other. Now, I think it's more inaccurate. I think it's silly that the ATF banned it because I don't think it fits the definition of machine gun. But if you want to have an intellectually conversation as ATF, as the regulatory agency, you can talk about that with the government, okay? Mm -hmm. And the government needs to make those decisions. With respect to Kevin's case, again, I'll go back to what we started saying at the beginning of the show, What's the force multiplier? If I take the brace off of his gun, how is his gun any more or less lethal? Now, I'll think about Diane Feinstein's website. <laughs> and on her website, it says that she wants to ban braces because it turns an assault rifle into, assault, into an assault pistol by making it more accurate. And I believe it's the first time in history that a politician has attempted to ban something because it makes a gun sa safer to shoot. So mm -hmm. I don't know where we're at. I don't know where we're going. I think Kevin's on a roll when he says that we all need to stick together. And I think mm -hmm. that's great Eric, to reach out. And all of us need to be doing that. Yeah. Let bygones be bygones. Let's stick together and fight this crap. Yeah. Uh, Walter, did you want to interject something here? Uh, well, <laughs> I, I'm, well, I was, when when braces first came out, I I stayed way far away from them mm -hmm. because I figured it wasn't going to be very long and they were going to be gone, mm -hmm. right? So then as it kept going and going and going, and we started making some stocks, regular stocks, and we make regular stocks and we make uh, brace type stocks too. I I or braces, I mean, they're not a stock, right? Mm -hmm. um, I said, what the hell? Everybody else is. 
And at that time, the gun industry, you couldn't give away an AR-15. Let's let's be real about what happened. You couldn't give away an AR mm -hmm. at a certain point. So the major manufacturers had to go brace because it made it cooler. You know, it gave that it gave that person that wanted that SBR something similar without the paperwork and the weight. So everybody jumped on board. Everybody's making all the big guys, all the small guys. Everybody's putting a brace out of some sort, shape, size, yours, who's ever, you know, everybody's. Now, you know, as a result of that, there's jillions of them out there. I don't know what the exact number is, but um, and um, you would think that people would be all fired up. But I, I don't know. I haven't seen it. You know, I haven't seen the populace fired up about it. Mm -hmm. Not yet anyways. So and then ATF just let it all go, you know. They let it go, you know. Let's just see that. Obviously, they had a plan. They had a bigger plan. Because um, didn't they tell you, Alex? I remember a month or two, three months ago, there was some stuff about braces out, and I think you said that everything is cool and and, and I'm, I mean I'm making it. I'm simple. I'm making it real simple what I'm saying here. But that they weren't, you know, they were they they everybody was good, and all of a sudden, boom, it ain't good no more. So I just I, I, right. You're right. Essentially, I think it was Matt Gates who had found out about it, and he posted something online about it. He wrote a letter to ATF saying, "Listen, you know, we hear some noise about you guys wanting to talk about braces. You know, um, we were talking Hank, about about the numbers. We've our company alone. I don't think it's a it's a secret. We've sold 3.5 million braces. That's just us. Okay. So." I, I can see ATF wanting to talk about it and have a discussion about it, but that discussion needs to lead back to the 2017 discussion that I brought to them, suggesting to them that the industry needs standards under which it can work to be able to develop the next braces. And those standards need to come from the 15 different types of braces that they've approved from then in 2012 Till the last time they approved a brace, the last one I saw was 2019. Mm -hmm. There's 50 different braces in the middle. Right. So yeah, that's how they come up with that. Walter, I don't know if I if I if that kind of answers some of what you were saying, but you know, it's exactly that. Yeah, three months ago they were talking about it, but six months before that they were also talking about it. Yeah, there's always right. been rumors from the very beginning that the ATF wants to do away, or someone at the ATF wants to do away with the braces. There's always been that. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.